Today, we're going to cover simply the 13th largest project in the entire cryptocurrency space, and that is Avalanche, which was created by a Turkish American computer scientist and Cornell professor, Amin Gun Sirir. Now, it was developed by Ava Labs, which he created, and it's a company that was just founded in 2018. It's headquartered in New York City. Important to note because with this administration, a lot of people are hypothesizing emphasizing that the cryptocurrency projects that are founded in America and considered American cryptos are going to do well during altcoin season because potentially there is going to be a crypto reserve and some of them might be included in that. Now, Ava Labs launched its mainnet in just September of 2020. Important to note because already it's the 13th largest project. Now, I said mainnet and that just stands for main network. It's when a blockchain is fully operational and the developed and deployed and is live and is ready to just exist as it is supposed to. Before the main net is a test net and that's basically just a testing environment prior to going live with the actual project. I should also mention that the Ava Labs Foundation exists to support the development, to foster growth, to oversee innovation. A lot of these cryptocurrency projects, they have a foundation to make it a little bit more transparent and seemingly it's supposed to be a nonprofit that makes really good decisions. But it does also help to fund and promote these certain cryptocurrency projects and Avalanche is no different because the Ava Labs Foundation foundation definitely funds and promotes Avalanche ecosystem. And so with that being said, let's take a little deeper dive into Avalanche, into AVAX and see why and how it became the 13th largest project in the entire crypto space. So Avalanche is touting itself as a fast, scalable and eco-friendly blockchain. It's designed to support decentralized apps, which is dApps and custom blockchains. So think of it more as an efficient competitor to Ethereum that's trying to really integrate GameFi and is focused on speed, low fees, and flexibility. Now, when we talk about speed, we discuss transactions per second, but the tricky thing is here, they used to have more information on their website as far as how fast each of their blockchains are. And I'll explain what I mean by each of their blockchains because they have several. But one thing is for sure, it is much faster than Ethereum's around 15 transactions per second. And also the transactions are confirmed in less than two seconds. Ethereum takes a couple of minutes. Gas fees are definitely lower than Ethereum and the fees are paid in AVAX. This is Avalanche's native token. Now, Avalanche uses a special proof of stake consensus that is very energy efficient and it can handle millions of users without slowing them down. Now, something unique about Avalanche is that it has three main blockchains and each has a different job. So the X chain is used for creating and exchanging AVAX and other assets. C chain is for smart contracts, which are compatible with Ethereum. And the P chain is for managing validators and subnets. Here's something very interesting that I found on the website. And by the way, Avalanche has a really nice website. There's a lot you can learn on there. So if you're a developer, I would definitely take a look at the video tutorial. And if you're an individual, I would go to the get started and I would learn as much as you can about Avalanche. I also want to point out that they have something called a bug bounty program, which is interesting because it basically rewards people for figuring out different types of attack vectors and they want to expose vulnerabilities, but they want to pay hackers in order to do that. So if someone is able to find a vulnerability on any of the chains or the project itself, they're able to win a lot of money. Now, just a second ago, I mentioned subnets and I want to point out that the point of that is that developers can create their own custom blockchains on Avalanche and it's used by big projects like GameFi, DeFi and Enterprise Solutions. Now, if you're curious on the actual partnerships that Avalanche has, they have a pretty good resource here under avax.network forward slash category forward slash institutions 
where you can read about the different partnerships that they have and some pertinent news as it comes to the project and its adoption by big names. So I've mentioned some of the upsides like blazing fast transactions, cheap fees, Ethereum compatibility, eco-friendly and scalable, supports custom blockchains, but let's also be fair and discuss some of the downsides with Avalanche. There have been several partial disruptions due to congestion of the network, but honestly, this is similar with other projects in the cryptocurrency space, so it's not just something that is unique to Avalanche. There are, however, a lot of centralization concerns, so unlike Ethereum, Avalanche requires a large amount of AVAX to run a validator, which is high and limits decentralization. And also critics argue that Ava Labs, the company behind Avalanche, still has too much influence over the actual ecosystem. Also, many validators are concentrated in certain regions, which could pose a risk to decentralization. Now, the network is also prone to a lot of bot activity, which temporarily leads to high gas fees. We're going to talk about the tokenomics and some inflation concerns in a second, but it's important to point out that although there is adoption, it's not growing at an impressive pace, and it certainly doesn't have as many developers or projects as the more popular blockchain solutions like ethereum or solana also the subnets are not as popular as expected so despite avalanche's push for subnets many projects still choose ethereum layer twos instead there is no doubt that ethereum still remains the preferred blockchain for institutional use which makes it a lot harder for avalanche to capture major market share but it has done a decent job so let's take a look at the tokenomics of avax as the native cryptocurrency of avalanche so initially there was 720 million tokens of avax now if you take a look at coin market cap the reason it says 715.74 million AVAX is the maximum supply is because there are actually fees that are getting burned. So there is some AVAX that is getting taken out of circulation because it's used to pay network fees. It's similar to gas fees in Ethereum. Now, it's important to note that all transaction fees are burned, which means they're permanently removed from circulation, which makes AVAX eventually deflationary. So this burning mechanism reduces the supply over time, which will potentially increase AVAX's price because of scarcity. So if we take a look here, currently there is 414 million AVAX in circulation. The utility of AVAX is to pay fees on Avalanche subnets and smart contracts. It's to create new subnets, which you need AVAX AVAX is a form of payment and for governance, allowing stakers to vote on network upgrades. Speaking of staking, the initial 50%, so 360 million of AVAX was allocated at launch and this included private sales, team community incentives, but the other 50%, the 360 million AVAX remaining is going to be released over time as staking rewards. So AVAX is used for staking in order to secure the network. Validators must stake at least 2,000 AVAX to participate, which is actually a lot, but stakers can earn rewards up to 11% APY. But this rate does decrease over time as more tokens are issued. So the Avalanche website actually has an amazing stats page where you can learn a lot about the metrics of what's going on in the Avalanche platform and AVAX as well. We can see here that if we take a look at network for instance we will get to see the active addresses whether it's going up it's going down if you like to do deep research into a project i highly recommend that you take a look at the website and all the stats that they offer now let's just take a peek at the historical data if you take a look so it was just launched in 2020 so it's kind of a newer crypto and again it's been so successful that it became the 13th largest project and you could see here that the all-time high occurred right around here when AVAX hit 
$146.22. It is currently over 85% drop from that point in time, but this occurred in 2021 when everything was flying. Now, something I always like to do when I'm analyzing these tokens or coins is to compare them against the price action of Bitcoin, which you can see here designated in orange versus AVAX, which is in purple. And you could see that towards the end of 2021, even in 2022, it was far outpacing the gains of Bitcoin. But as you can see, as of late, Bitcoin has actually been outperforming AVAX. So that about wraps up my video of explaining Avalanche and AVAX to you simply. I'm curious to know, are you someone that's investing in Avalanche and AVAX? Do you think it's a worthy project? Do you think it's going to miserably fail in the end and it's just copying what Ethereum and some of these other blockchains are attempting to do? Really want to hear from you guys in the comments and let me know which topic in crypto and which cryptocurrency project you wish for me to cover next. Appreciate all of you for watching this video in its entirety, and hopefully I'll see some of you in the next one.